Good morning my darlings and welcome to a new vlog. I look like I have made a huge effort today. Um, I didn't actually mean for my hair to be this voluminous. I've had my heated rollers in for the last maybe two hours while I have been pottering about the house, getting some work done, things like that. And it's just gone very, very curly, but I think it's gonna tone itself down because I do have quite a few bits that I need to do <coughs> in the garden this morning. We have had a very, 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 very exciting delivery this morning, one that I have waited over a year for. <laughs> Finally, the bits and pieces for my Hartley Botanic greenhouse have arrived. It's not set up yet. I don't know when the setup is gonna happen, but hopefully I won't have to wait too much longer. And to celebrate, how fun is this dress? I am in love. It's got so many kitchen garden things on it. It's got um, it's got radishes, it's got peas, it's got bean pods. Such a fun dress. One of you guys actually sent this to me in my Instagram DMs. Oasis collaborated with the RHS. How amazing is that? Literally just goes to prove that my hobby of gardening is very cool these days. Um, yeah, Oasis collaborated with RHS and they have the most amazing collection of dresses. I'll leave a link to the whole collaboration page down below but this one is definitely my favorite I've added my Zimmerman belt it's just so fun so I'll show you um, it's not very exciting to see right now but I do need to go into the garden also to harvest some bits for my lunch so without further ado oh, it's sadly today is the first non sunny day it's what we would call in England muggy it's just muggy it's warm it's cloudy um, it's good gardening weather <laughs> I've just been working on a quick little photo setup outside for an all, part, all the plants breakfast post. It's actually very clever, so you can now get these little jars. Um, you defrost them the night before. This one is a carrot cake bircher. It is absolutely delicious. It means that I don't snack throughout the day because it's so filling. This one's Charlie's favourite. It is the coconut and berry chia pot. Super duper easy, good portion size. And then my absolute favorite is the almond and berry uh, little pot here. I literally just blend the contents of this. It's a load of frozen berries. I think it's some almond butter, basically the stuff that I would normally put in my smoothies. And then I add some tiger nut milk and blend it all together. Super duper easy way of doing a healthy breakfast. Um, and you can now add these things to your all plants order. And I do still have my discount code, which I'll leave linked down below. Oh, it's actually a bit drizzly as well. That's a real shame. It's going to look so amazing when we have a greenhouse here. It's going to look as though it's in a jungle with all the verbena. Yeah, this is actually not very interesting to show you, but um, <laughs> here it is. Oh, in fact, maybe it is interesting because I can show you for the first time ever the colour that my greenhouse is going to be. I don't know if you'll be able to tell um, lighting wise, but if we shuffle around here, I believe this colour technically is called Umbria or, or Umbria Olive and it is kind of like a very light sage green. Do you know what? I'm going to call it pistachio because I always think if you see a pistachio ice cream and it's this colour, you know it's going to be a good one. Whereas if it's a vivid green, you know it's going to be like an artificial pistachio, which we don't want. <laughs> but this is like a proper a good quality Italian pistachio ice cream colour. So I love it. I wanted something that would look beautiful, timeless. You could have gone for a dark green, I could have gone for a white. I thought white would look too modern. Um, but yes, it's a gorgeous colour. You can see how it looks here against the um, stonework. Oh my gosh, hopefully it'll get installed. Do you know what? Typically it's probably going to get installed while we're away. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so I think, yes, I can see a couple of courgettes in here. It's absolutely amazing. Every, I would say realistically every other day, there is new produce in here that is the perfect size for snipping. Oh, courgette stalks are quite spiky. something else which is ready to harvest is our artichoke. I might do some kind of risotto or pasta dish but this is this middle one is actually a tiny bit too big I would say that one there at the top is perfect size for harvesting. Thank you. Right. Thank you. 
Charlie is also foraging for his lunch. It's like a it's like a treasure hunt with the Monge too. Sometimes yeah. you have to step further away to see them. Weed, isn't it? Uh, no, that's just. Oh no, that is past it. Oh, look, there we go. There's some here. The oh, more look. you look, yeah, the more yeah, you yeah, find. Yeah, how, far, how mad is that? Is this the first time you've harvested from the kitchen garden no, this year? I've had salad and stuff, but I haven't done a lot of veg. Other things. Yeah. More around here. What are you having for your lunch? So I have got some wild salmon, which I am going to poach. Ooh. Um, I've marinated it in some sweet chilli sauce. Uh huh. And that sounds nice. I will. It's a bit of a cheat. It's a quick meal, but it's high in protein. And it's pretty healthy. Because then what I do is I do a, a, a brown rice bag in the microwave. Mm -hmm. And then when the salmon is cooked, I crumble it into the rice. Ooh. And then I'll mix in some steamed monge too. Maybe a bit of soy sauce, and it's a bit of an Asian sort of bowl, rice, rice, yeah, bowl. rice bowl, salmon rice bowl. Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, I'd have sucked some spinach in there as well. Uh huh. And it, it's a good, good after workout. I'm sure I saw some down here. Oh, there's a big one. Oh yeah. Not far off now. Perfecto. So here's Charlie's first morge two harvest. So you're going to steam them. Yeah, I'll steam these just to touch, like really like for like a minute. So Lovely. It's still got a nice bit of crunch. Enjoy. Beautiful. Meanwhile, I have foraged, foraged, is that the word? Harvested? Picked four courgettes and two artichoke. I need to do a little bit more sweet pea trimming. As I've said in every video so far, literally every day, <laughs> there's a hundred new flowers. My pumpkins are also coming along very well. You can see a white ghost pumpkin down there. There's some really big ones in here too. I don't remember having pumpkins as early as July last year, but I wasn't as good at actually feeding them last year. Um, there's some flowers there which makes me think there's probably more but I think my biggest pumpkin is that one tucked away in there which is so exciting a couple more here it's really going to start taking over this part of the lawn as well which is fine gosh I can still see more mulch too and um, the courgette plants in here I think I might have picked them all but you always have to double check oh no I can see some more in there can you see it shining there? Oh, and I found another pumpkin and this one might be my biggest actually. <gasps> oh, this is so fun. Pumpkins galore in this bed. I believe this is another kind of pumpkin. I have a feeling it might be called a zombie pumpkin, but that one's gonna look rather cool. And my yellow melon courgettes. See, it looks like it's gonna go green. Maybe I should leave some a little bit longer before harvesting, but these I'm so excited to try because apparently they're a little bit sweeter and nuttier than the traditional variety. So there we go, minus Charlie's Mange 2, which he's already taken to steam. Here's today's harvest. I've been wearing my Vivaya sh Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you. Someone let me know that you can also put these shoes in the washing machine, so I don't feel bad wearing them out in the garden. Not that you can even tell. I always wear them, even like stomping across the soil. Um, and was it a 15% discount code that I had for these shoes? Cannot recommend them any more highly. They are so comfortable and they literally feel like the most beautiful little ballet flats. I love them. Right, let's get cooking. I've just come back up to the house and his lordship is waiting patiently on the sofa. Are you waiting for someone to join you, sir? You lovely boy, I just adore you. So we have turned the aga off for the summer and we have decided that we don't like induction hobs, <laughs> do we? Well, it's, we don't, <clears throat> we tend to always use this as like a, like a complimentary tool to the aga, which yeah. is fine, but I mean, the always pan is making life a lot easier because yeah. you can do a lot in it. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, this is not ideal. We're going to get a bigger induction hob, I think. We're going to yeah. get four. The thing is, induction's okay, but this one, even with the always pan, it, it limits what you can put on here. Yeah. Because it's a really bad designed induction. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll get an induction four, which will take up and it'll be recessed in yeah. when we uh, get around to it. It's so just anyway. a lot more energy efficient. So what yeah, have you got cooking? Um, so we now have the Ooh. wild salmon, which has been Steamed. ideally you want that in the sweet chili overnight. I've only had it in the sweet chili for about an hour. Right. Um, and then yeah, I'm just literally poaching it. I've probably put a little bit too much water. But I actually, you know the basket that you strain the peas in. You yeah. can steam the salmon in that. I know, I know. But equally, I've just done the green beans in here, as the monge two in here as well, and I'm just using the same water. So that's the other good thing. It's just all in one pan. And you got Brilliant. one thing to wash up. 
Um, I so think you should be sponsored by Always Pan, darling. Done now. This is my favourite. This is the Always Pan, though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, this is my favourite one. So then, really? Over the cast iron? <coughs> yeah, because it's it's really nifty. It's very lightweight. We've got them at the cottages, haven't we? Yep. Cottages. Uh, mm. We've got them at the cottage. But there you go. So that will now crumble up. Now, people are probably thinking this is not exactly going to be the culinary masterpiece. But if you are looking to eat healthily at home for lunch, mm -hmm. so we've got peas, I did these in the microwave. I probably could have done these in the basket. Mm -hmm. Stick them in with the microwave rice. Nice. The monge too from the garden. Lovely. Then we are going to get the skin off this fish. It should just crumble off. If, if, it, if I was Marco Piatti, I'd be going, there we are. <laughs> he always goes, there we are. <laughs> Um, and then you stick it all in, and then, more quickly. As Jamie Oliver would say, chuff it up. Yeah. So all in there. You will notice a little interesting fact of the day, mm -hmm. how red that is, because that is a natural wild salmon. Right. Whereas salmon you buy often in the supermarket is pink, because they feed it pink food colouring. Shocking. Yeah, now this is the unhealthier bit, a bit more sweet chilli. Yeah. A little bit of sugar never killed anyone. <laughs> probably did. And then, the messy a bit. Now, it's not going to look beautiful, but trust me healthy. when I say this. Delish. It, it literally is. looks like the kind of thing that you buy in wasabi or something. Yeah, it is really nice. And then you just do a light bit of, this is light soy sauce, not too mm -hmm. much. And it really is yummy. Ideally, if you stick spinach in here as well, then you've got three green veg. Lovely. You've got the bas brown basmati rice, which is low glucose index gi which mm -hmm. is like slow release energy mm -hmm. and then the protein and all the omegas from the salmon so i think if there's any nutritionist watching i reckon they, they might give you a 10 out of 10 is a fairly complete meal wonderful yeah. there you go mate and that's charlie Irons luncheon do you want some of this um yeah, gonna have it now mate no that looks weird no it doesn't it looks gorgeous there you go lovely enjoy darling Wholesome. Wonderful. Okay, now that the kitchen is clear of Charlie, I'm gonna make my lunch. We do often share lunches, but I don't like fish. So I'm gonna use up some of the courgettes from the kitchen garden. I have been saving every amazing courgette recipe that I come across. Luckily, my Instagram algorithm is now serving me courgette recipes, which is fantastic. How cute, by the way, are these little bows? I'm obsessed with this dress. Hair scraped back, the humidity outside, like being in Palm Beach all over again, has made it inflate and i have another exciting delivery something new from our place you just saw charlie using the always pan they have just released this ovenware set dun 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 it comes in all the colors that you would expect from um our place i went for the sage green color as you can see everything within the set Dexy. Everything within the set stacks in neatly together, so you could literally just slide this under or even in your oven for storage. So once again, perfect for small kitchens. These are just really, really helpful. At Christmas, I can imagine these filled with roast potatoes, with honey glazed carrots and turnips. Turnips? What are the things that you serve with the carrots? parsnips <laughs> honey glazed carrots and parsnips at christmas um great for warming things up great for macaroni cheese and baked pasta dishes so you've got three different sizes that would probably be the honey glazed carrots this size is perfect for macaroni cheese um perfect size for a couple of courgettes actually so i'll probably use that now and then a much bigger one as well which would be good for stews good for really big bakes great for your roast potatoes um obviously all oven friendly as it's ovenware and then it also comes with um dicky just coughing right in the background this reusable oven mat which is so so helpful i put this underneath when i'm doing cakes when i'm doing tarts things like that quiches things like this are really useful and the fact that it's reusable means you don't need to use loads of baking paper and then this is what i probably think i will use the most it is a really big oven pan baking tray obviously everything sits on this I just thought as well i might do some courgette bread and these would be the perfect size as a loaf tin 
um, but you can also use this on the stove top. So I could pop this on top of the agar, you can use it as a grill pan, so many uses. I did baked courgettes the other day with rice inside, so you can just pop your courgettes on here and stick them in the oven. So yeah, just loads and loads of different uses, and this doesn't weigh too much either, and it matches perfectly with the green theme of the kitchen. So what are we gonna cook today? Okay, I'm feeling really indecisive and can't quite decide what I'm going to make. However, one thing I am definitely need, need to use up is my puff pastry, so I'm definitely going to make a tart. I did this the night before we went to America, and I think I mentioned before, but I didn't get around to showing you because I had the Esther drama. Uh, so yes, that all just went very wrong that evening. But what I'm gonna do is make another version with the other veggies from the garden, as well as the courgettes. I've got some beans, I've got some mange too, some radish, some carrot. And then I think I'm gonna slice this one really thinly, lay it out here, add some olive oil, add some Parmesan, add some breadcrumbs, and I think they will just be the most delicious little courgette slices, which will be crispy and my mouth is watering. So slices and a little pie, I think it could be rather yummy. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, for the pie, let's get the cheese out of the way. I need to just add the courgettes into the oven, drizzled with some olive oil. So I'm just taking my three smaller ones, putting it in there at 200 degrees for just under 10 minutes, and this will just help to soften them a little bit. Okay, in they go. Alexa, set timer for eight minutes. Okay, my slices are all lined up. I am going to cover them in some olive oil. There we go, that'll help soften them. Some seasoning. Some Parmesan cheese. And then I'm gonna add this concoction that I found in a drawer. I think it's just salt and breadcrumbs to give them an extra crispiness. Ooh, it might have some garlic in here too. Okay. Well, this was a little bit of a make it up as you go along recipe, but I'm gonna stick this in the oven and keep an eye on it, and hopefully they will be the most delicious little crunchy snacks. So next I'm going to attempt the pie. Oh my gosh, it looks so delicious. So we need to start with our puff pastry and then add the courgettes, which are now out of the oven and my other veg into the middle alongside an egg and cheese mixture. Sounds delicious. I've gone a little bit rogue. I hate wasting ingredients and Charlie had some rice left over and I had the little mini courgette left over that didn't quite fit into my tart. So while the tart is cooling in the fridge, you need to cool it for 10 minutes. I have just shoved the rice and the leftover courgette in here and I'm just gonna stick this in the oven next to the slices to make myself a little rice and courgette bake because why not? Okay, the tart is out of the fridge. I've got it on the baking sheet on a pizza tray because the courgette slices are on the bigger tray. This has just come out of the oven after 10 minutes and I'm just gonna nibble on this. I know it's very boring, but I love rice. Let me know if you feel the same. So I'm gonna stick this in the aga for, sorry, oven. <laughs> the aga is switched off for around 30 minutes. So this is kind of my starter, rice starter and then a tart and sliced courgette for my main. How delicious. Well, here are my two courgette creations, the puff pastry tart, which actually looks and smells delicious, especially with the addition of the breadcrumbs, the egg in there. I've never added egg into a tart before, but that has worked so well. And the baking sheet is perfect because it's completely non-stick and it's gonna save me a lot of baking paper. A few of my slices did actually burn, unfortunately, but they still look absolutely delicious. I ate my rice um, bake and it's filled me up. So I'm gonna save these to have, this I will have with my lunch tomorrow and this will be the perfect accompaniment for our dinner. So I would say a very successful trio of courgette dishes.
So with the boys' help, I have created my post-lunch flower arrangement using these beautiful big pom-pom-like hydrangeas where we've not had rain in so long, we've had to use the sprinklers on them and the weight of the water from the sprinklers does tend to make them flop over a little bit. So to save them, I have put them, I've snipped them at the stems and put a few of them in the vase. This is just five hydrangeas, but it looks absolutely incredible. And then we've got some of the purple foliage, some of the catmint and salvia as well as some verbena in the middle. So I'm going to have this in my dressing room and we can enjoy it in the background of the try-on that I'm going to share with you now. Well, don't my flowers look absolutely gorgeous in the background? So darlings, as promised, I have got a little bit of a try-on to share with you. It's still very much wedding season, wedding time of year. <laughs> I don't have any weddings left to attend this summer. However, I know lots of you guys do, and I've got lots of lovely events still coming up, lots of garden parties, lots of trips, and Inspired by this dress, I have placed a rather large order on Oasis. I have not shopped on Oasis for a long time, but they have got the most gorgeous special occasion, summer, garden party, wedding guest dresses. So, and the most amazing price points in my opinion. So I thought I would do a little try on for you. I'll give you a full um, view of this fabulous dress, which I am just going to be living in for the foreseeable future. It is my perfect, Silhouette, <laughs> honestly, could there be a more Josie dress in the entire world? Carrots, turnips, broad beans, runner beans, radishes, peppers, I'm not growing any peppers actually, parsley, French beans, even camellia flowers, tomatoes, everything that I'm loving growing in my garden in one dress. You can wear it without a belt, but I love how it looks with my Zimmerman number. So my kitchen garden dress was my, my favourite thing in the order, but let me show you some of the more dressy styles as well. Okay, so maybe having my hair in a bun for the last hour was not the best idea. It's just now gone completely flat and lifeless. But what is not lifeless, however, is this fabulous dress. I very much thought that it looked a lot more expensive than it actually, in fact, is. You've got this absolutely gorgeous detailing on the bodice. I love the ladder detail and the material is this gorgeous, almost like a polka dot effect on the fabric, which I always think is a design detail that very expensive dresses tend to adopt. And this gorgeous floral, very lightweight material. The fact that the material is so lightweight, I think it would be perfect for one of those really hot days if you do happen to be lucky enough to attend a wedding on a scorching day, but equally a perfect dress for summer garden parties. I love these different tiers that you've got in the skirt, a very, very classic silhouette, and you've got this ladder detail again to nip you in around the waist, which I think is such a gorgeous design detail. Let me know which of all these dresses is your favorite down in the comments below. Okay, I love the silhouette of this next one. You've got a really gorgeous tight-fitting bodice and it's got almost like paneling detail in the bodice which gives it this really beautiful fitted shape. I think I need to just reduce these straps by a couple of inches. I've got a very short bodice, I've got a very short everything, but luckily adjusting straps is super duper easy. So just by pulling it up, it would fit me a whole lot better, but I can already tell from the silhouette that it's <laughs> just absolutely gorgeous. You've got these little pockets and this would have been such a fun dress to take to Palm Beach with me because it's got really tropical flower pattern all over like hibiscus flowers, lilies they almost look like and my favourite length it is a very classic elegant midi length. If the wedding that you're going to is going to be a very colourful affair then this would be perfect but again just to be honest any summer special occasion or even a special work thing, like if you are doing a presentation, then who's to say you can't wear a fabulous floral dress? This feels like a really nice holiday, kind of last evening on holiday sort of dress as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is going to come with me in my suitcase on our next trip. It's no secret that I love a halter neck dress and this one is just absolutely gorgeous. The pattern and the fabric is simply stunning. It's almost, actually, do you know what? It's almost the pistachio green of my greenhouse. You've got this lovely ruffle detail around the neckline and it's almost like an antique kind of floral printed into the, would you say it's tulle? I think it's kind of like tulle netting. I have cinched it in around the waist. It does nip in 
without a belt but personally I think there's so much fabric going on here that it's quite nice to break it up with a belt and then there seems to be a lot more material in the skirt so you can you know be a bit dramatic dance around and you've got plenty of material to play with again you've got this lovely ruffle detail in the skirt as well which is so pretty with all of these I've just been wearing it with oops, <laughs> with my green um, aquazura heels the neutral colored ones by the way last time I checked were 40% off in the sale I, sh I did have a sale edit in my last newsletter so if you click the link my latest newsletter at the top of the description box um, then that that one with my sale edit should come up in your inbox if not there'll be something on my blog as well um, but yeah perfect again perfect wedding guest dress for me I think this is gonna be perfect for our family holiday we go with Charlie's family every year at the end of summer to Catalonia and we do like to get dressed up in the evenings even though it's a very relaxed Greek town the restaurants in the port are actually quite smart and people do get dressed up in lovely outfits so I feel like this will be perfect for that as well as again <laughs> summer garden parties and any other special events I might have coming up this summer I love that it's like pleated as well such gorgeous design detail I think this aside <laughs> from the kitchen garden dress is possibly my favorite so far I will leave all of these linked in the description box down below. So this next dress, I'm pretty sure is also part of the RHS collaboration. You've got this gorgeous orange pattern all over it, literal oranges all over the skirt. It is a shorter length, which actually I think is really cute, just above the knees and then you and then balanced out with the long sleeves. Again, I think this one's definitely gonna come with me on our holiday next week. We might even be on that holiday by the time you're watching this video so check out my Instagram stories you'll probably see me wearing this over on there it is a really nice lightweight material so it's not going to be too warm if you are planning on wearing it anywhere toasty if you were to get invited to someone's greenhouse <laughs> unveiling then this would be perfect um, but yeah just you know family barbecues summer soirees it's just lovely to have some fun patterned dresses like this in your wardrobe the back detail is also really fun so you've got this oh am I meant to have done up a button there there we go uh, so you've got this tie detail and then a big open expanse of back which again it just helps to keep you cool I am loving this silhouette and again you've got a really gorgeous quite voluminous sleeve style secured down with some little buttons at the cuff another one here that i wish i'd had before going to palm beach because these colors the pinks and the tropical pattern are very appropriate for palm beach you can see lengthwise i would call this a mid axi between a midi and a maxi and similar to one of the first dresses i showed you you've got these three tears which float out perfectly for the skirt of the dress i love the puff sleeves i feel like puff sleeves are just one of those trends that in my books will always be on trend um and then you've got again this ladder detail around the waist which i think is super flattering again i feel that this is a really fun wedding guest outfit or holiday outfit let me know down below where you would choose to wear fabulous colorful dresses like this one well this is just absolutely adorable it's kind of similar to the tropical um square neckline one that i showed you earlier does it have pockets yes we've got little pockets in here too just above the knee length again this feels like the perfect dress to wear to family gatherings you know barbecues with friends summer garden parties i love things like this i do i have really started to appreciate <laughs> shorter dresses during our heat wave um so i have been looking to add some more to my collection once again i feel like this would fit me just a tiny bit better if i bought it up just by literally by a centimeter on the sleeves because it does feel a tiny bit roomy but you'd rather it be roomy than too small because at least then you can do your alterations i have um got all of these in a size six so i would say if you're between sizes then i'd be tempted to size it down with all of these but yeah back to the dress gorgeous floral pattern you've got tulips you've got roses is that cornflower looks like cornflower i love a square neckline and i love a fit and flare silhouette there's another one that's going to come with me on our holiday and also looks very cute with my Zimmerman belt. I haven't been accessorizing 
any of these dresses very well. I feel like I don't even need to, you guys know that I'll just probably put a straw bag as my accessory of choice with all of these looks. Well, I don't feel that I've done a particularly good job steaming this dress, I just gave everything a super quick steam, but what a gorgeous summer holiday dress. It's really lovely, feels almost like a silk chiffon material as the overlay. You've got this bat wing or angel wing sleeve detail on the sleeves, and then this floral pattern down at the bottom of the skirt, which is so lovely. Again, so tropical, perfect for summer holidays. Too much white to wear this to a summer wedding, but perfect for other kinds of summer events. You've got this pleated detail up at the neckline. You could probably add a really simple little waist belt too. And the fabric feels really lovely and lightweight. So if we do have any more heat waves and you shouldn't be too warm in a dress, a dress like this one. And I purposely left this one till last because I want to spend the rest of the day wearing this gorgeous little dress. This is very much a Josie day dress. I do love a day dress. Again, I guess you could wear this for a wedding. In my opinion, it's a little bit casual, more, again, summer garden party, or if you like to float around the house wearing floral dresses like I do, then in my opinion, perfect for that. I thought I just saw a radish on here, but it's not. It's that same floral pattern as the square neck dress um, that I showed you a couple of dresses ago, that polka dot style material, which I love. Um, so let's bring you down a little. Can you see this lovely uh, trim along the edge of the neckline? You've got the same trim around the waist. A little bit too low now, but you can see it's this gorgeous midi length, which I absolutely love as a day dress length. And then these little, very subtle uh, puffs on the shoulder. So, what a fabulous collection. I feel like I've found a new love in Oasis. It definitely seems like a kind of brand that has so many things which are my personal style. And the fact that they've collaborated with the RHS is just the cherry on the cake. So many beautiful feminine designs, so let me know which is your favourite down below, darlings. Now, I really just need to sit at my laptop and do some admin <laughs> for a couple of hours, so I'm going to get on with that this afternoon, um, and I will catch up with you later. <laughs> It is now Thursday morning. I've popped on my favourite little Amazon dress today because I'm probably going to end up pottering about in the garden and inspired by my try on of the bits from Palm Beach the other day, I've added the Zimmerman belt that came with the skirt, uh, which I love. It's probably going to be a little bit of a replacement for the one that I always wear. It's got kind of like purple, purple, vanilla -y. Do you know what it looks like? Neapolitan ice cream colours. And I think if I want to dress this dress up a little bit, it just adds a nice bit of shape. But I'm wearing this because I'm going to run a few errands this morning. I need to nip to a garden center to pick up some compost, specifically ericaceous compost, to um, plant the blueberry bush that you saw me unbox in the last video. And I also want to do a little bit of seed planting. We're meant to have some rain over the next couple of days, so I thought I would get a few of my autumn veg seeds in. I realised I forgot to show you yesterday, but this pair of shoes was also in my Oasis order. It feels so, I feel so silly that I forgot to show them to you yesterday when I was trying everything else on. Um, but they are the most fabulous. Oh, foot fetish people are going to go wild for this. Yeah, really lovely kind of raffia effect with this green thread running through them. So if I wanted to wear this dress as for an occasion that's a little bit more dressed up, then a pair of raffia sandals would look absolutely perfect. But for today, I'm just popping on my little flat shoes. I washed my Chloe sandals last night, which are my usual gardening shoes. They just wash so easily with fairy liquid or vanish and just give them a little bit of a scrub and they come up good as new. I am procrastinating a tiny bit this morning, so without further ado, let's get on with my gardening chores. Ooh, 
And I had a phone call from Hartley Botanic this morning, <laughs> expecting them to be giving me an arrival time for my greenhouse um, installers tomorrow, and they've said that they're coming on Monday now, which is a huge pain because we are going to be abroad on holiday on Monday, so I'm actually not going to be here to see the installation, which is such a shame. And I asked if they could therefore postpone it to week after, and they said no, the next delivery dates that they have for installation are in October, <laughs> and obviously I don't want to wait that long. So it's a shame that I won't be here to see it installed, but at least by the end of next week when, I, when we get back from our trip, I will finally, <laughs> a year later, have my dream greenhouse. Yay! What is it that they say about dogs that sleep on their backs? <laughs> is it that they feel very relaxed in their home setting? Or is it that they're just totally bonkers? Hey my darlings, I'm gonna make my lunch and I do have of course my tart which we were just too full to eat yesterday but I'm gonna pop this in the oven and warm it up and I've got out my artichoke and I'm going to make an artichoke and sage pasta because I am feeling very peckish and I don't think this is gonna be quite enough for me today or am I making the same mistake again twice? Oh, I can't quite decide but anyway this is gonna make me want to do the pasta. I have a new obsession on Instagram. I'm sorry, I'm probably going to pronounce this lady's name wrong. Cloda, Cloda McKenna. She is a chef on ITV's This Morning. And Carol Bamford, owner of Dalesford, shared one of her videos the other day and it was a sage pasta. Was it this one? Uh, no. Do I have it on my saved page? Ah yes, here we go. Her videos are just absolutely beautiful for one if you're looking for some really nice wholesome content but she also shares some gorgeous um, recipes. So this is her sage pasta recipe. She actually makes her own pasta but I've just bought some fresh pasta and the sage butter that she's making to have with the pasta is literally just butter, sage leaves, parmesan cheese and salt and pepper and then here's all the instructions. I need to use up my artichoke as well but maybe I'll do an artichoke risotto tomorrow and just have pasta and tart for my lunch. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Oh, the oven's ready. So this is just gonna be my little experiment. But first I need to go and get some sage leaves. Ooh, we've had a delivery. Did you sign for this one, bunny rabbits? Another rather overcast day. That should do the trick. That should be enough, because I'm only going to do a small portion. So just a small portion of fresh pasta going in salted boiling water in my perfect pot. This is always the perfect size for cooking pasta because you want to allow enough room for the pasta to move around um, and not be all squished into a smaller pan. So next I'm just melting a fairly large knob of butter and I'm adding in my sage leaves and I'll give those just a couple of minutes until you start to get a biscuity smell. I'm adding a few spoonfuls, I'm going to try not to dribble, of oops, my pasta water. And I've just turned down the heat. I'm going to give that a couple more minutes. In comes the pasta. Get that all nicely covered. And of course, some Parmesan cheese. A few minutes later, it smells amazing and I think we're ready to serve. So for me, this is quite literally the perfect lunch with lots of ingredients from the kitchen garden. Sage pasta smells amazing and I'm so excited to dig in to my courgette tart. So without further ado, bon appetit. Well, it has turned into the most gorgeous afternoon. I don't really want to spend lots of time in the car, so I'm going to leave my errands until later and do, do a little bit of gardening now. I've also just unboxed and added to their vase a new delivery of my perennial millennial display. 
bouquet from Flowered and this is actually one of the new smaller sizes. We decided to release the bouquet in three different sizes and we've also updated my discount code. It's now Josie £10 so you can actually get my perennial millennial display, the smallest of the three, for just £45 if you use that code which is amazing. I'd love if you guys take some snaps on Instagram and tag me in your stories when you receive your perennial millennial displays. And I do also have a large of my bouquet to give away. I'm going to be sharing the details of that on my Instagram page the day that this video goes live. So definitely go and um, check that out if you'd like to win a gorgeous bouquet of flowers. Every time I look at it, it just makes me so happy. So many of my favorite blooms from roses to verbena, these beautiful little garden blush roses, the fennel flower wax flower which lasts absolutely forever. It really is all of my favourite blooms in one bouquet. over. I spent a nice half an hour reading in the sunshine and then got some work done and then went out in the car and did my errands. So now I'm going to finish off the day with some gardening. My compost has arrived and I'm just going to put a very thin layer on this bed and probably that one as well um, where there has been so much growth the compost has really settled and I feel like it could definitely do with a fresh layer and I'm also going to have a little flick through my seed collection and see which seeds I can plant now for some autumn veggies so things like Asian greens and spring onion as well as certain types of lettuce, rocket, you can plant all of these things right up until September but it definitely needs a fresh layer of compost before I can plant that. It should rain a little bit tonight so it's a good idea to plant your seeds before every everything's going to get a nice sprinkling of rain. Dickens. Excuse me, come here. <laughs> come here. Look, that's not nice. That's not nice for doggies that are going on their walks, is it? So I've just picked another yellow melon courgette, a tiny little courgette and another little handful of mange too. And I think I'm going to make a really nice kind of Indian-y spiced rice dish for dinner. That should be full of flavour and use up some of the things that we've got in the cupboard. Mm -hmm. 